Hello everybody and welcome to The War Room. This one is for this weekend's UFC main event, another heavyweight main event, Jairzinho Rosenstrike taking on Jelton Almeida. An interesting one, this one. Of course, Rosenstrike, loads of striking experience. You know, he's got some good wins over some big names, the likes of Overeem and uh, JDS. Jelton Almeida's one to watch, though. We, we have to keep an eye on this guy because he's he's relatively new to the heavyweight division. He was a light heavyweight for a long period of time. He moved up. He's had a catchweight fight. And I just think he brings problems to the heavyweight division based on the fact that he's tall enough and long enough and strong enough, but he's not carrying the excess weight, which really is the, the point of difference in this fight. Um, when it comes to the weight class. Okay, before we go any further, a quick shout out to our friends and our sponsors at Athletic Greens, AG1. I love this stuff. I started using this to make sure that my daily nutrition was just covered, making sure that if I'm missing meals or I'm running around or, or I'm kind of buying stuff at the supermarket or whatever, that all of my baselines are covered. I need to make sure I'm getting my probiotics. I need to make sure I'm sleeping well. I need to make sure my brain is clear and functioning. And the other thing that you'll get if you buy Athletic Greens using our code is uh, D3 and K2. Anybody that lives in a dark climate, spends a lot of time indoors, you need D3 and K2 in your life. It's good for your immune system. Um, if you listen to Dr. John Campbell, there's a whole plethora of different things that uh, D3 and K2 are very good for taken together. So if you use our code, you will get a year's free supply of this and five of the free travel packs, which again are an absolute lifesaver when you are packing. Um, it, it's just, it's just, it just takes the stress out of my day. Honestly, I get up in the morning, I get my 12 ounces, I mix my scoop in and shake it up. And then before the day's even started, I'm like, okay, I've got the nutrients I need. I know my brain's going to be functioning. My energy levels are going to be good. And I know I've got my probiotics in me. So whatever else I take in is going to be digested well as well. Uh, vegan friendly, keto friendly, less than a gram of sugar in these things. They are really, really good. Veronica's addicted to it as well as I'm sure you've heard on the podcast. She does love this stuff as well. So uh, if you're going to order from us, you need to go to athleticgreens.com forward slash outlawed, outlawed with the ED. You will get five free travel packs and you'll get a year's free supply of the uh, D3 and K2, as well as all the other stuff, the bag, the scoop, the bottle, all the stuff that you need to get started, get on this. It will take years off your life and save you worrying too much about your diet. Okay, talking of diets, back to heavyweights. And we have a, a big heavyweight and we have a small heavyweight. And, and I feel like, you know, at, at times when we've looked at the heavyweight division, the people that have stood out are the ones that are heavyweights physically, but don't move like heavyweights. You know, you go back, somebody else that uh, Rosenstroik's got a win over, uh, Andre Olovsky, probably the first, I mean, maybe not the first, but but one of the best athletes as, as a heavyweight that we've ever seen. And the point of difference is that he was fighting guys that were as big as him, but they were slower. They weren't able to move as fast. They weren't as, uh, you know, as, as athletic and as quick. And this is what you've got with Jelton Almeida. Now, of course, Rosenstrike on the other side has got that extensive kickboxing background, but at times when he's lost in the in the octagon, it's it's been down to strikes at times. Like you, you know, Ngannou just uncorked massive shots and stopped him. And I'm not saying that Jelton Almeida can't can't do damage to him as well. But of course, you watch Almeida's fights and you go, well, I know what he's going to do. He's going to back you up against the fence. He's going to kick and then he's going to shoot and, and and he's going to be in on your legs. And once he takes you down against the fence then it, it's you're dealing with a, with a heavyweight that's kind of processing you like the, the Dagestani style of wrestling when it hits the ground. He's very good at forcing people to turn and give their back. Really good with wrist control. Really good at just kind of spreading his weight over people so they feel that he's a heavyweight, but at the same time, he's able and ready to make moves as, as soon as they start to scramble. Like the times when we've seen people frustrated is when they're trapped up against the fence in that corner and they've got Almeida on top of them and they've got to make that decision. Do I turn and scramble up against the fence and give my back or do I try and keep my back against the fence and try and scramble up while he's constantly taking my legs away? You know, constantly we're seeing these things come back again uh, in, in that pocket up against the fence that close style of wrestling. It's, it's almost a thing in itself because if you think, you know, wrestling is on an open mat there's no uh, fence to control somebody up against so it's like this style of grappling has been developed specifically for mixed martial arts and of course could be even all the you know the the abdomen 
uh, trained fighters are very, very good at this. There are other fighters now from different regions of the world that have started to adapt this. The next generation guys do this very well. Um, you know, this is Paddy Pimlet's game. And if you look at the rest of the guys in that in that team, you know, Luke Riley, Adam Cullen, Nate Fletcher, they all do the same thing. It's it's that chase to the back, pressure, pressure, pressure. Which one do you want to do? Do you want to turn and face me so I can punch and elbow you? Or do you want to turn and give me your back so I can choke you out? And I would say it's, it's slightly more difficult to do for some reasons in the smaller divisions because those guys move quicker and probably pound for pound, they're able to generate more force in a short space but with the heavyweights like I mean we, we saw Daniel Cormier struggle doing this same kind of thing against Der against Derek Lewis who just stands up with people on him and that is the challenge of course at heavyweight when you're trying to control somebody is it requires a lot of energy to hold this person down until they get tired then it switches to making it a little bit easier because heavyweights do slow down when they're carrying other heavyweights. Now, I don't think there's any secret here that Rosenstreich is going to want to keep this one standing, but he is he can be quite a passive striker. And, and at times in his fights, even with the win over Overeem, he was very passive in that fight. You know, the fight was slipping away from him and Overeem was like, you know, what, 30 seconds away from a win before he got his face split in two. Rosenstreich can be backed up and he can be outworked. Like, Quick tail of the tape for you. So we've got Rosenstrike coming in with a record of 13 wins and four losses. Um, I think he's like 75 and five kickboxing. I don't have his Wikipedia pulled up, but it, it's somewhere around there. It, it's a, it's an extensive amount of fights. On the other side, Jelton Almeida, 18 and two. So slightly more experience in mixed martial arts. You'll also notice on Almeida's record that he grapples a lot as well. He's got you know professional grappling matches against you know a variety of different good level uh, opposition. It's quite clear that this is <clears throat> this is striker v grappler. With Biggie Boy, with Rosenstrike, you've got a fighter that is is excellent counter striking. Remember when he allowed um, um, Arlovsky to walk onto that check hook? He's got really really good clean counter punching. He works the lead leg very well as well, which would be useful against Almeida if you weren't concerned he was going to level change straight away on the back of it. And this is where I feel like Rosenstruck's game starts to get limited a little bit against uh, against Almeida. So just continuing on with the tail of the tape before I get too distracted, a one-inch height advantage and a one-inch reach advantage for Almeida. But but the the, the difference in, in weight is, is going to be significant, I think. I mean, like the last time Rosenstruck weighed in, let me just double check this, but I think it was like 160, uh, sorry, 261. Yeah, 261.5 against Daukas. <clears throat> he weighed 259 against Volkov and against Curtis Blades, he came in at 257. So, I mean, he's going to be the bigger, heavier fighter in there, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to work out very well for him, especially if he is taken down. Now, if, of course, if the fight stays standing, then, you know, you've got to start leaning towards Rosenstrike based on his experience and based on the fighters that he's already beaten. However, if he's gun shy, if he's kind of hanging back against the fence and waiting for Almeida to level change, he might find himself being hit with shots that he wouldn't get hit with in a kickboxing match. Like this is where <clears throat> this is where the dynamic of wrestling sometimes makes a really good striker look quite mediocre because they have other things to think about that they don't have to deal with in uh, in a kickboxing match. Now, <clears throat> Rosenstroke's not got bad takedown defense, but the times when he has picked up losses are times when he has been taken down. Um, we're just going back here. So like Curtis Blades, for example, took him down three times. Uh, over him, although he beat over him, over him took him down twice. Even going back to his UFC debut against Junior Albini, uh, two takedowns out of six attempts in that one. He does get taken down, but he does stop the majority of takedown attempts. And he's good at staying safe on the floor. He's not generally getting submitted, although that could change very, very easily here, given the fact that... Um, Given the fact that Jelton Almeida, for me, is probably one of the best heavyweight finishers that, that is in the heavyweight division right now as far as the ground game. I, I I just I feel like this guy I feel like this guy maybe has been fighting against the scales for a period of time, right? So so you look back back through his record and so he came into contenders at light heavyweight. He had his UFC debut at light heavyweight, and from what I can tell going back into his record, he's always been a light heavyweight. 
he's always been six foot three as well from what I can tell. So he's always had the, the potential to grow into a bigger frame. And I do feel like he's, I do feel like this is the right weight class for him now. Sometimes you're better to fight heavyweights. Like DC realized this, I think, pretty quickly. The light heavyweights have got the finishing capabilities, the power and the speed, as well as the the, the, the technical abilities. And they can maintain it much better than a heavyweight can. If you fight a heavyweight in the right method, heavyweights will get, get slower faster than other weight classes. And I, and I feel like if you gel to Almeida and you're looking at the two divisions, I'm kind of thinking, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take my chances at heavyweight right now. He can always come back down. But what I think we're going to see is him grow into this weight class. Like, So his, his fight against uh, Anton Turkar was a catch weight of 220 pounds. He weighed in at 216.5. Like he's he's not he's not even at the limit of a two hundred and twenty pound catch weight, but that might be because in his head he's thinking about potentially going back down to light heavyweight. What I would say is stick in this weight class and beat as many of these heavyweights as you can. I think you'll find a quicker route to the top at heavyweight, and I think the money at heavyweight now John Jones is back is far more interesting. Um, what haven't I said? <clears throat> okay, so pic picture picture. Rosen strike in the fight. Okay, so so he doesn't get started very fast. He kind of hangs back a little bit. He kind of sits on his back on his back heel and his chin's up a little bit and he's kind of watching people and seeing how they're moving and studying their patterns and stuff. But if he finds himself up against the fence doing that, he's going to be dealing with the long-range straight strikes of Almeida as well as the potential for a level change. So if I'm Rosenstrike, I'm thinking, well, I've got to keep moving side to side just so Almeida doesn't line me up against a, a fence and shoot straight into it with no concern that I'm moving. If he's stationary, he's going to be easier to take down. If he's moving, even if it's just marginally side to side, he's going to force Almeida to keep adjusting. He's not going to want to shoot into the fence and Biggie Boy escapes out the side. He's going to want to make sure that he's as still as possible when he level changes which is usually why it gives you something to think about before your level changes. Think about this level change, because then you're, you're frozen and you're thinking about dealing with whatever's coming at you and your legs stay in the same spot. Now, does the striking change that for Biggie Boy, given the fact that he's got the experience? Is he going to realise that this is going to be the game plan for Almeida? Most likely. So then what's it, what are his options? Now, <clears throat> the, the clear and obvious one, of course, is an uppercut because Almeida does tend to level change straight down into that pocket. And because he does it from a distance, like he's not hand fighting into a level change, he's shooting from a distance, there is potential there to hit that uppercut. And, you know, of course, we, we've seen Curtis Blades get caught with this against, uh, against Derek Lewis. It's a really, really useful punch. The danger with an uppercut, especially if you commit to it because you think that guy's level changing, is that it does leave you open. So... This is where Almeida now needs to be smart about his le about his level change and about his setup for his takedown. Because if he does the same pattern over and over again, Biggie Boy's going to spot it. Whereas if he faints and comes back up to the head, he might crack him with a shot that hurts him and makes it easier to finish the takedown. Now, once he's got the takedown and it's on the floor, I can very much see Rosenstroik just kind of... <sighs> kind of leans up on his elbow and then his wrist gets tied up and collapsed and then he gets annoyed and then you see him shift a bit and then he puts his other arm up and his wrist gets bound like that process when he hits the floor I I don't know as he can do 25 minutes in that position against Almeida I feel like Almeida's smart enough to maintain position over submission he's smart enough to strike if the submission's not there and not obvious but he's also very very good at reading his opponent when they're going to move and seeing what's there to to, to control. <clears throat> I think Biggie Boy's going to be dealing with his legs being bound up and his wrists being controlled and and a, and a, a, a small but capable heavyweight weighing everything onto him, making him tired very quickly. Now, of course, this all switches entirely over to the opposite side if Rosenstrike can A, stop the takedown, or B, get back to his feet safely. And if he can do that a couple of times, Almeida might start thinking, this heavyweight's hard to hold down. I might just start trying to strike with him. And then you start moving into Biggie Boy's range a bit more. And and if if I'm Rosen strike, I'm fainting with hands and I'm smashing legs. Faint hands, smash legs. Because it's going to make my movement easier 
and it's also going to make his level change more difficult. If you've got a bruised leg, the last thing you want to do is be bending this leg to squat down to shoot. And the other thing you have to remember is once that leg's taken damage, if uh, Almeida does get Biggie Boy up against the fence and he's in on the legs, that lift is driving through bruised muscles. It's something else you have to consider. <clears throat> I'm interested to watch this one because I think I think Rosenstrike, he's I don't he's not quite quick enough, athletic enough. I don't know is he's is he's game enough to be heavyweight champion. But I do think Almeida has got the potential to cause a lot of problems for a lot of people. As, especially especially because he's quite certain of his game and a lot of the heavyweights are like it was a surprise when Nganu took uh, Cyril Gann down. Cyril Gann wants to strike. John Jones will most likely want to strike with most heavyweights, but of course, you know, dealt with Cyril Gann in the most efficient way. This this guy causes a different problem for a lot of heavyweights in this division. And I do feel like, although Rosenstrike is a very, very dangerous striker, he can get kind of caught waiting sometimes. And that's either going to be detrimental to him because he's going to get hit with shots that he's not expecting, or he's just going to get outpointed and then Almeida's running away with the fight on the scorecards. And if he weighs in at, what, 220, 215, 220, 225, even if he weighs in at 230, he's going to have a 30-pound weight deficit that is not going to be unnecessary weight. I love watching heavyweights, but the, 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 the days of the Roy Nelsons are coming to an end, right? The reason why we're still seeing some heavyweights of that kind of physique in MMA is because the money's not there right now, right? If there was if there was more money on the table to do MMA than there is to do NFL, NBA, we'd have a lot more big, strong, powerful, lean athletes coming into the sport. And I feel like we would see many more Jelton Almeida kind of kind of physiques over the you know the 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 kind of uh, Shamil Abdurahimov kind of Parker Porter type of physique. It's just not. It's not elite, and and I think that as MMA evolves, especially at heavyweight, we'll see those fighters kind of fall by the wayside as the the heavyweights with abs, like the likes of Cyril Gann and uh, Jelton Almeida, will start to come through because they'll have the technical abilities, but the physical skills as well. Sorry, the physical abilities as well as the technical skills. Like heavyweight's going to get more and more competitive, especially if John Jones retires after he fights Mirchich. Then you've basically got just a group of big guys that could be sorted any way like Pavlovich is making waves of course Almeida I think has got sort of got potential to cause some problems as well like this heavyweight division especially if John Jones steps aside again he's going to be wide open and it's going to be someone like a Jelton Almeida that, that's going to that, that's going to be fighting for the belt I'm excited for this one I'm always a fan of Biggie Boy because you can never you can never take your eyes off him you can never assume that you've won the fight one punch at the end of the the last minute of a 25 minute fight can still do enough damage to completely change the 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 whole fight no matter how well Jelton Almeida has been doing from the first bell up until the 24th minute if he gets hit with that same shot that Overeem got caught with there's no coming back from that so we can't take our eyes off uh uh Rosen strike of course he's dangerous all the way through but I do think that he's going to be playing a waiting game here that might backfire on him. And I, I'm excited for Jelton Almeida. If he stays at heavyweight, I feel like he's going to be the the the, the, the fast athlete in the division, kind of like one of the, the, the strengths that Cyril Gann has. Like imagine if Cyril Gann was a grappler like Jelton Almeida at that kind of size and, and, uh, and, and you know, muscularity. Problems all day, all day. I think this guy's interesting. Of course, this is a step up. I very much feel like he's ready for it. 20 fights into his career. This is his 21st fight. 21st? 21st fight. And, and I, I feel like Rosenstrike is that kind of litmus test to see if you're ready to, you know, pass by and, and, and head to the top of the division. Really interesting one. I'm looking forward to this one. Make sure you check out our sponsor, AG1, Athletic Greens. It's fantastic stuff. Go to athleticgreens.com forward slash outlawed with the ED on the end. You'll get Five free travel packs, you'll get a year's free supply of D3 and K2. You'll sleep better, you'll feel better, and you'll thank me later. Enjoy the fights, and I'll see you next time.